Do your effects need to make a mess? With decal outputs, your VFX graphs can splat, squish, and stick over your scenes. Then they can literally leave a piece of themselves behind. The VFX graph is a powerful tool for creating real-time visual effects within Unity. With GPU acceleration, simulations can support up to millions of particles. Building complex visuals has never been easier with its node-based graphical interface. Your VFX graphs have even more possibilities with decal outputs. Decals allow us to attach temporary textures to the surrounding environment. Think bullet holes, paint splatter, or footprints. Decals work by projecting materials onto other objects. A projected decal can wrap around geometry or even receive scene lighting. In a VFX graph, decals usually act as secondary elements. They often complement another primary particle system within the same graph. For example, imagine a player weapon that strikes a wall. One system will actually process the hit effect, and another will output the scorch mark left behind with a decal. We'll demonstrate how to set up a VFX graph decal using the Gooball scene from the Visual Effect Graph samples. Follow the link in the description to download a copy of the project for yourself. The Goo Ball is a mystery sci-fi blob. A shader graph distorts the vertices of a sphere to create its undulating surface. That Goo Ball dribbles onto the floor and hurls liquidy projectiles in all directions. Every time one of its particles makes contact with a mesh, it leaves a splat behind using a decal. To illustrate how decals work, let's isolate part of the graph and just focus on these projectiles. This particle system represents the primary effect. This secondary stack will process the decal splats. Though VFX graph doesn't have direct access to the underlying physics system, we can approximate collisions using the depth buffer. A depth buffer represents the scene objects in 3D space from the camera view. A depth texture taken from that buffer would look something like this. Depth buffers are already calculated as part of deferred rendering, so they're usually available at minimal extra cost. In VFX Graph, our particles can interact with them using a collide with depth buffer block. Without the block, the particles pass straight through the mesh geometry. With the block added, the particles can bounce off. Reducing the bounce and dialing up the lifetime loss makes the little goo balls die on impact. The projectiles now disappear when striking the depth buffer. And the result can approximate a physics collision, but only for 3D objects that appear within the camera frustum. Notice how the decal particle system uses a GPU event instead of a spawn context. In the projectile system, we add a trigger event on die block, and the GPU event will connect the two systems. The parent system, the projectiles, can send data to the child system, which handles the decals. Receiving data via that GPU event happens in the child system's initialized context. Here we can use a block or operator that explicitly inherits source attributes from the parent system. In this case, we want the particle's position on death, so we add an inherit source position block. That captures the particle's last known 3D location to send to its corresponding decal. Some attributes like velocity are available via the get attribute operator. The operator just needs its location set to source instead of current. This example shows how to align the decal's starting direction with the projectile's velocity. Decals are rendering effects. Thus, before using decals, we first need to make sure that we've enabled pipeline support for them. Activate that in both the HDRP asset and the global frame settings. You can find those in the project settings graphics or locate the individual assets within the project view and change them there. Once those are enabled, be sure to assign the decal some good initialization values, just like any other particle. Here, its lifetime will last a few seconds and we can start it off with a little bit of randomness. Then we can actually add our decal outputs. Currently, VFX graph decals only work with the high definition render pipeline with planned support for URP in the future. 
Thus, we're using the output particle HDRP lit decal. And here we add a nice texture and matching normal map. We can adjust our shading values and tint everything green using a set color block and some alpha settings. And now some colored splotches appear all over the room. These are our decals. If they're a little small, size blocks can help scale them up. This can adjust the overall scale with a curve or multiply some variation on top of that or stretch it non-uniformly along a specific axis. A combination of those blocks can make the decal more prominent. With this setup, some decals look fine, but some, especially on the ceiling and the floor, are projecting incorrectly. To fix that, we'll need to orient our decals. Ideally, we would align the decal particle so that it's perpendicular to the collision surface, facing straight down the normal. Again, we don't have direct access to physics collisions, so we can use the depth buffer to approximate the normal direction. We'll use a separate group of operators over here for that. First, a get attribute position operator retrieves the collision point in world space. We temporarily convert this into screen coordinates. Then we can sample two extra points just slightly offset, one shifted horizontally, another vertically. Then the position depth node can use the depth buffer to convert our screen space points into world space. Three points define a plane, essentially two 3D vectors. Then we use the cross product to calculate the surface normal that we're looking for. This is a handy technique whenever you need a face normal, but you only have a depth buffer to work from. Because our decals project forward in the positive V, opposite the normal, we flip the vector direction. Then we pass the result to the decal particle system. Here, a set attribute block stores the z-axis. Then we'll use that axis data in the output context. Down here, a get attribute axis z operator retrieves that data from the current particle system and passes it into an orient advance block. This lets us lock the most important axis, the Z axis, but allows adjustments to the other two. And that extra block does the trick. Our splats now hit the walls, floor, and ceiling correctly. Note that this is an approximation. If you sample points from a corner or edge in the mesh, your decal can still get occasionally misaligned. Adjust your settings to minimize these issues. With the first decal working, assembling the rest of the effect is about layering details, and adding some animation. In this extended graph, a gravity block gradually draws the splats to slide down the walls. And we can add a height check to exclude any decals based on worldwide position. This way, splats on the ceiling and floor aren't affected. A second context duplicates our original slimy decal, varying the timing and scale. This trace decal stretches as gravity pulls it downward like alien slime leaving a trail. And that works almost like the main decal system with just a few extra blocks. And finally, we can add other particles to the scene using the same technique. These drops have different timing, but also leave decals everywhere they drip onto the room. So that's our main decals, trace decals, and drop decals. And that's our final effect, alien goo spilling droplets in all directions, leaving a splat every time one hits the level. If you want to know more about decals and the VFX graph, follow the link in the description to sign up for our free ebook guide. It's full of tips and techniques to take your Unity effects to the next level. We can't wait to see how you use decals with your own VFX graphs. Thanks for watching.